Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Dope Individuals Only Podcast. I'm Eric. Um, This is going to be a Father's Day edition episode of the podcast. Uh, If you guys can notice the surroundings, I'm outside. We're taking the kids on a field trip today, and um, I'm outside doing the podcast. Um, I know it's been a while since I've been uh, since I've dropped a new one, but um, thank you guys for your support. Thank you guys for all the messages and comments on social media. Thank you guys for listening. Um, the listens have been going up. Um, I've noticed I've gotten more followers on Spotify, so thank you for the love and support. It's greatly appreciated. I do this for y'all. I do it for me too, but I also do it for y'all. Um, and being able to share a piece of myself with y'all. Um, and I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to do so. Um, as I said, today is going to be a Father's Day edition of uh, Dope Individuals Only. This is only uh, me today. I'm the only dope individual. Um, I want to share a story with y'all. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Um, first and foremost, I want to shout out all the dads out there for putting in that work. All the dads out there for showing up day in and day out um, and being there for your kids. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I'm not even your child. And it's still a thank you because, um, you know, when I was coming up, I didn't have any father. I didn't know any people really with a father, with their actual biological dad. There was stepdads in the picture, and a lot of the time that wasn't a relationship that felt um, natural. We'll we'll say that, and a lot of the relationships showed that um, these kids weren't weren't loved by the man who created them. Um, For the few that were loved by their stepfathers or mom's boyfriends, um, you know, shout out to y'all for stepping up to the plate for child for a child or children that you didn't create. Uh, but for the most part, um, it, the relationship showed, you know, um, and a lot of them weren't healthy. So thank you, guys. There's a plane overhead. Hey, man, we're going to rock out. We're going to rock out. But. Yeah, shout out to you guys who did step up to the plate for all the step pops out there um, that do the job for for a man who who didn't want the responsibility. Um, So, yeah, I wanted to start out with a big shout out to all you guys out there. I will say that I think this generation of men, it's changing. Like I said, when I was a kid, there weren't many fathers around. Um, And today you see dads all the time. And you see them in a capacity that you've never seen them in before. Like, I walk around the mall and I see dads with baby harnesses strapped to their chest. You know what I mean? I walk into the men's bathroom and there's a man in there changing their child. Um, and the most fucked up part is they don't even put changing tables in the dad in the dad bathrooms as if dads don't change um, diapers. You know what I mean? So even that, like little ways in that, you can see that there's a culture change going on um, because in women's bathrooms, you will find um, the changing tables for babies. Uh, So I I love the fact that I I see the changes and I'm part of the change. You know, like I said, I, I grew up without a father. There were a couple men in my life. Shout out to my godfather, Raul, um, who played a huge role in my childhood until this very moment. My uncle Al, um, Al Wing Lopez Lewis, you know, a peekaboo artist for y'all local people who know him. Um, he played a huge role in my life. My grandfather, um, RIP, you know, he's always with me and everything, but he played a huge role as a, as a child um, and helped drop some gems on me and things like that. So I'm very grateful for the men that I did have in my life. Um, I didn't meet my dad until I was 14, Uh, and even when he did come in, it still wasn't a big role. By the time I was 14, I felt like there was nothing much he could teach me at that point. By then, I had learned how to survive. By then, I have learned how to hustle. By then, I had learned, you know, what an idea, the, the idea of a man to me was already formed in the men that were in my life by then. So by then I was kind of just looking for a friend and uh, that relationship never really cultivated into what I, I wanted it to be uh, for numerous reasons. But, you know, I am, I am grateful to still have the man in my life. And, and even though it's a small capacity, I am grateful for whatever capacity he is there in. Um, and I'm grateful to have met the man you know, the relationship is was never uh, what I wanted it to be, but it is what it is, you know, and I'm grateful for that because 
um, in his absence, I learned how to be a man. But we're going to rewind all this. We're going to rewind this, and we're going to start from the beginning. I want, Like I said, I wanted to share a story with y'all, and it was having my first son, JC, on. And some of you guys who have been listening to the show since it began know exactly who JC on is. A lot of you, that's one of the highest rated episodes that I've had um, because my son came on, and he let his personality fly. And I love that because he's unapologetically him. Um, for the episode, uh, the episode title is, uh, I don't remember what episode it is, so forgive me, but the title of the episode is the King and the Prince. Um, and it's him and I, and it's 30 minutes of just fucking dad and, and son, just letting it fly, letting it fly. Um, and like I say, he came on there, he let his personality shine. So if you guys want to check that out, um, I highly recommend it. I also have a uh, an episode up there with my daughter, um, Elizabeth. I don't remember the the name or the title of it, but she's the only little girl up there, and you're not gonna find another another episode like hers because she's unapologetically her as well. Um, very very creative people, very very funny kids, very um, charismatic kids, you know, and and I love them. I love them dearly. Um, but like I said, I want to rewind this. So I'm going back to the day all of my children, except one of them was planned, which is Isaiah. Um, JC on was planned right after we had pretty much graduated high school, Diana and I. And it's crazy, right? Because I had set out not to have children in high school. Here comes another plane. But I had set out to not have children in high school because every woman in my life had had children um far too early and i mean there's no such thing as called perfect timing except the timing that we get but in terms of preparation and and just making sure that you're starting off on the right foot it was extremely early my mom had my sister at 13 Uh, my grandmother had her first child i believe at 16 my aunt had her first child at about 16 my sister had her first child um she was pregnant at 15 got had the first baby at 16 so there's a trend in my family where all the all the children being born are being born to children um regardless of whether they did a good job or a bad job if you ask my cousins and my brothers and my sisters um They were all babies having babies. So the one thing I never wanted to do was have a child um, when I was in high school. So that was like a goal of mine. But pretty much immediately after I graduated high school, I'm 19 years old, and we plan to have our first child, Jason. And um, I don't regret it. I don't regret it one bit because I'm able to do certain things with my child that I know I probably won't do if I had them at 25, 26, 27 years old um, because there's a lot of things that I just um, I'm no longer interested in now that, you know, him being so young, he is interested in. But now I have I still have the youth to go along with that and and do some of the things he's he's interested in and participate in some of those things, um, have the energy to keep up with them um, and him, you know, and things like that. So there's there's a lot of things that I'm grateful for that I did it at such a young age that I probably won't have the energy to do or the desire to do it even though you know i probably should because he's my son um so when i was going out and i was telling people i didn't tell nobody that we were as far as my family we didn't tell anybody that we were planning to have a child we just told everyone when we were ready to tell them that we were having a child and we did that around the same time that we had gotten past the window where it's like high risk pregnancy is over um, and I remember I went to my grand, my grandmother, I went to my grandparents house and I walked to my grandmother's house and, um, and I said, Hey grandma, you know, I wanted to let you know something that, you know, you're going to be having another great grandchild. And in my family, I'm like the black sheep, but I'm the black sheep of success. Which is weird because typically, you know, the black sheep is somebody that just can't get right. Um, For me, it's I'm the one who can do no wrong. And that in terms makes me the black sheep 
uh, because people, uh, you know, I get treated a certain way. I get called bougie. Um, they, they, some of my family likes to say that I, I think I'm better than people, um, and, and things of that nature. Uh, and I, I kind of take that with a grain of salt. It is what it is. Um, I do have higher expectations for myself than some people do, and it is what it is. You know, if that makes you uncomfortable, then fucking kick rocks. I don't know. Aim higher. <laughs> but, but. Um, I walk in, I tell my grandmother, Hey, you know, you're going to be having another great grandchild. And I don't remember exactly what she said, but she says something in the long, along the lines of, are you stupid or are you dumb? And, and she smacked me in my face. And at this point, you know what I mean? I'm a father to be. I've been in a committed relationship for a couple of years. I got my own, own apartment, own my own car at this time. Like, you can't tell me nothing. You gonna smack me in my fucking face? You know what I mean? I came over here to celebrate with you. Shit, shit infuriated me. And I felt so disrespected. I don't remember how I handled it from there. You know, I got a lot of respect for my grandmother. I love her dearly. God rest her soul. But... You know, I, I I wore that shit like a chip on my shoulder. I wore that shit like a chip on my shoulder. You gonna you gonna smack me and call me stupid because I'm choosing to do something with my life, even if you disagree, even if you think I'm making a poor decision. In that moment, what I was looking for was support, and what I got was called stupid and a smack in the face. So you know, I carried that and I wore that shit like. Like I said, a chip on my shoulder, and I wanted to prove everybody wrong, including my grandparents. Well, my grandmother, like, you know, mainly to show her that I could do this shit. I'm not, I'm not a statistic. I'm not y'all. I'm gonna beat the fucking odds, you know. And um, unfortunately, my grandmother died even before she could see how su how successful it, it planned out to be. Here in the physical, I know she's with me um, and everything, but here in the physical, she didn't get the opportunity. Um, and part of that, you know, and looking back on it now, almost nine years later, I really wish not so I could be like, see, I told you, but was that there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. And even though you'd have been through something and it played out for you and mom and my aunt and everything like that it doesn't mean that it's going to play out for me like that um and and it's more so so we can have that adult conversation i wish he was here for to hear but i'm very i'm very proud of myself because the road of fatherhood hasn't always been easy from the moment that my child was born you know i was i was doing a lot of things when my child was born that were undesirable in my relationship um, from lying to, um, you know, keeping secrets. Um, the one thing that never wavered was my responsibility as a father. But as far as being a good partner, it wasn't always there. And then that sometimes got in the way of being a good dad, I would say. Because, you know, there was times in our relationship where it was on shaky ground. And there was times where our relationship was going to now change between my wife and I um, and it was going to hinder the type of father that I wanted to be from going through um, breakups to you know having having my son see me you know we go to sleep in the same room at the time we only had a one bedroom apartment so now I'm sleeping on the couch um, and we're not doing as many family activities and I'm pretty sure somewhere in his subconscious that sits even though he was really young but he heard us fight a lot when we were younger um, he seen he seen me go from sleeping in the room to um, sleeping on the couch. He seen us go from not having as many um, family, uh, having a lot of family activities to maybe not as many. Luckily, a lot of these things transpired when he was young, so he probably didn't retain as much. But I know there's still part of him that had the opportunity to see that, and it still lives within that little boy um, somewhere inside. You know, and he's going to have to find a way to navigate that in his adulthood at some point or another. Um, but I'm very I'm very happy with 
I'm very happy with my decision. I'm very grateful for having the opportunity to not only have one child, but have three healthy children um, and to have never missed a day of their lives and to um, be in the role that I am and provide the lifestyle that I have for my children along with my wife because I didn't have these things growing up. You know, I was I was hell bent on making sure that my children never had to endure the shit that I had to endure as a child um, from um, not having the electricity in the winter time and um, having to skip meals some nights and um, having to wear dirty clothes at school because we couldn't afford to do laundry or, um, you know, and that's that's me having to wash my clothes out and forgetting or being too lazy to do so. And now I'm wearing the same things. Um, and my mom busts her ass. I, this isn't, this isn't a slight to my mother. I, I see how hard my mother worked. It was times where my mother sent us off to school and then I didn't see her till the next day at two o'clock in the morning, you know, and my sister's holding it down and things like that. So I'm very grateful for, um, my, my tumultuous childhood because it, it built up this armor that I wear that I take into being a father where it's like, you guys don't have to do this. You guys don't have to experience this because I'm here to make sure that you don't have to experience this. This is my job as your father, but I'm also going to give you the a piece of what I experienced. So you guys got a taste of the real world. Yeah, you got it good because the lifestyle that me and your mother provide for you and how hard we work on your behalf and our behalf to make sure that we never go back to those humble beginnings we came from. But I also want you to understand that this shit ain't all rainbows and sunshine. There's a lot of hard work and, and blood, sweat and tears that goes into this lifestyle that we have and what it takes to manage this lifestyle that you've grown accustomed to. Um, but I'm very prideful in that because, like I said, I didn't always have that. And even though my mother would probably have loved to provide that for us, she was unable to um, for all the very reasons and and variables that took place in my childhood. Um, and I want to say for anybody that had came from those humble beginnings, just like myself, or even harder humble beginnings, that shit's possible to create whatever you want. I would truly say the biggest thing that is determined where I came from and where I'm at is one, first and foremost, my mindset, my mindset of this isn't, this isn't it. This can't be it. And I will not I will not accept this to be it for me. You know what I mean? I can't change the the circumstances that I was raised in. I can't change the socio the socioeconomic status that I came up in. I can't change the parents that I got. I can't change any of that. But what I can change is how I respond to it, how I learn from the things that I had to endure and how I apply it to the life to to my life today as a grown man that has choices, that has options, that has resources, that has the freedom, the freedom to create the life that he wants to create. You know, and I try to I try to let people know that because I understand what it's like to feel like the world is against you because there are even moments today where it feels like even though I'm not a victim of shit, I know that for a fact. I'm not a victim of anything. There's still times where I have to go, hold on, Eric, pull yourself back. Yeah, this is a shitty situation. Yeah, this is hard, but this isn't the end all be all. This isn't your this isn't your everyday life this isn't something that is your forever you know what i mean this is what it is but we can respond to it this way or we can respond to it that way and yeah that either way i choose is going to open up its whole bag of worms but i get i get an option to choose what bag of worms i want to open up and what path i want to walk from this point forward and there's power in that. There's power in the freedom to choose for yourself. And every day I wake up and I make a decision on what type of man I want to be later on in life. And I make those decisions today. So that way one day I can get to that man I always dreamed that I was going to be. And there's power in that. And, and I'm here to tell you guys that there's power in that. And I want you guys 
to feel that power. I want you guys to recognize that power within you, just like I see it in myself and just like I see it in the people that I engage with on a daily basis. I'm here to empower you guys as well to find that power, especially my fellas, especially my fathers out there. Because I know for some of y'all, it's very hard. Some of y'all got bitter people in your in your inner circle. Some of you guys got bitter people as your as your co-parents. Some of you guys got um, foundations that are crabs in a barrel mentality. And we got to recognize those things and we got to think about where we want to be and how do we get there. And it starts by making those decisions today. And we got to act like that motherfucker 20 years in the future who we're going to be. We got to act like him today. And we got to carry ourselves today like that man. And we got to make decisions like that man would make. Because in 20 years, we will be there. Um, and this is something that I constantly battle with myself where I say, I, I love that one rock video. He said, the quote goes, day one or one day? One day. Or day one and I make that decision every day from am I gonna stop drinking coffee today or am I gonna start it another day or am I gonna take a cold shower am I gonna spend my last minute in the shower in cold water or am I gonna start another day am I gonna have one less beer this week or am I gonna start another day am I gonna scream at my children about this or am I gonna talk to them is that going to start today or is that going to start another day and i'm and i ask myself that that same question every single day for multiple things or whatever decision i'm trying to make that i feel like this is a fork in the road for me this is where i get to choose whether i'm going to be the eric of old or the eric of new the eric of old or the eric that is coming down the line in 20 years and it starts by making those conscious decisions today and um, I'm here to tell you guys that you guys have that same opportunity. You guys have that same opportunity. Am I going to pick my kids up today because I got out of work a little bit earlier? Or am I going to just see if their mom will just let it rock and be only on the weekends like I've been doing? You know, are you going to put forth that extra effort to be the father that you want to be? Or are you going to continue to, you know, do things as you've been? And if you choose to do things as you've been, that's perfectly fine. But another quote I love to hear is, do not complain about results you did not get for work you did not put in. And I have to be real with myself as well. Because I don't make all the decisions for the man that I want to be in 20 years today. I don't. And sometimes I beat myself up about it. But then there's also times where I got to say, hold on. Chill out, Eric. No, you didn't make that decision today. But as long as you got another day tomorrow, if you if you, if you're blessed to have one more day tomorrow, you're going to have another opportunity to make this a different decision. Now, whether you do it or not, it's totally up to you. You know, I'm done with the preachy stuff. I'm done with the preachy stuff. Um, yo, man, I love being a father. I love being a father because it's taught me so much. There's there's very few things that taught me as much as I've learned in life as being a father has football has taught me almost as much as I have from being a father. You know, I learned a lot in football, how to be a team, a teammate, how to know when to lead, how to know when to follow, how to, how to, how to step up to the plate, how to put your anxiety aside and, and take a gamble. You know, these are all things I learned how to be, how to, how to push through when shit hurts. You know, I, I just sprained my ankle so many times and, Take that shit up and get back on the field. You know, that that takes some mental fortitude. That takes mental callus. I learned a lot of those things from playing football. Another thing I learned a lot from was just being a friend, you know, listening to people, knowing that I'm not the only one with problems, knowing that sometimes even though I got problems, I got to put mine aside so I can help someone else in this heat of this moment. You know, how to have empathy, how to love even when, you know, things don't go my way, even when my expectations of people aren't being met. How to still not be bitter about it and to be still be a friend even when I don't want to be, you know, that takes a lot. And being a father, you know, knowing how to create something from nothing, knowing how to be there when it's hard to be there, knowing that sometimes it has nothing to do with you. Sometimes it has absolutely nothing to do with you and it's not about you 
and taking yourself out of getting your ego out of the way, getting your pride out of the way and putting other people before yourself, you know, teaching a lesson and then having to learn from that very lesson that you're teaching at that very moment that you're teaching it to your child. There's been so many times where I try to teach my child about what it means to have integrity and I'm teaching him an example of something about something that I'm still doing. And as I'm teaching him, I'm listening to the words that are coming out of my own mouth. And I'm giving myself a lesson on integrity just as I am teaching him. You wouldn't imagine how many times I've done that. You know, and that shit that no parenting book is going to be able to teach you. That shit that's real life experience. That shit that you are only going to get by being, your, by being a parent. You know what I mean? Knowing how when you want to fucking quit, when you're trying everything, you, you ever clean up your living room five times in the same day? You ever go through, through the dirty clothes basket and see that there's clothes in there that's still folded that the kids didn't want to put away and you about to rewash it? <laughs> you ever been that angry? You ever walk upstairs and all the lights in your house is on like these motherfuckers pay bills? Yeah, yeah, anger management. It teaches you anger management right on the spot. You know what I mean? Like, that shit, like, being a parent is no joke. It's the hardest job in the world. And I say that, and I still believe that 90% of being a, a parent, 90% of the job is just being present. The other 10 is that work that I just talked about. That's the other 10%. But that 10% is so heavy. But it's an honor. If you don't feel that way, you got some soul searching, in my opinion, to do. Because it is an honor to be a parent. It is an honor to lead a pack. It is an honor to have this, this fucking light that you created. And you get to mold it. And to all the things that you didn't have as a child. And you get to give it as, as great of a fucking life as you could possibly provide. And you get an opportunity to send it out into the world. And watch how it, watch how it navigates the world with all the lessons and experiences that you've, you've given it for the first 18 years of its life. And you get to gauge how good of a human being that you are. And how much of a human being that you've grown to be. Through them. Through them. Because they are a reflection of you. They are a reflection of your words and your work ethic. They're a reflection of, of your hard work. They're a reflection of your love. They're a reflection of the experiences that you provided for them. And that's a great telltale to see who you are as an individual and what you're like. And the things that you prioritize. And the things that you love and the things that 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 you gave them. And it's all a reflection of you. So don't take it lightly. Because it's a huge responsibility, but it's one that it is God given. It is God given. It is one that we should all fucking appreciate because not everybody has the opportunity to have children. Not everybody's children have the opportunity to live a life. Not everybody's children has the same opportunity as mine. And I'm fucking grateful for that. And I, and I let my kids know all the time. I remember there's one time right before I close up shop. We're walking from football practice. We're walking from football practice. And on the baseball field adjacent to where the football practice is that we're walking toward to go get back in our car, there's a little boy. And he's playing with three other kids. And my son says, Dad, look at that. I said, what? He said, he has one arm. And I looked at JC on and I said, aren't you grateful? Not because that kid is lacking something that JC on doesn't have. He probably doesn't know what it means to have two arms. So from him, it's not coming from a place of lack, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. But my son has an opportunity that not every child has. Just like you have an opportunity that not every person has. And we should not take that lightly. Appreciate your children. Appreciate the God-given things that they have, whether it be their health, whether it be them being having, being 
able to walk and have two hands, being able to communicate, being able to love and hold each other, be appreciative of all that shit because nothing is guaranteed in this life and appreciate it all, love it all, savor every moment because it goes fast. Just look at those baby pictures. Even if they're still a baby, look at those baby pictures. It goes fast. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Happy Father's Day to all my fathers out there. Keep putting in that work. All the women out there that's doing the dad's job too. Thank you guys for stepping up to the plate. Y'all not getting a happy Father's Day because today is for days for people like myself. But thank you for the work that you put in. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all women. For my step pops out there that stepped up to the plate or the boyfriends that stepped up to the plate. Thank you guys for playing the role that these little boys need. And these little girls need, and everybody, peace and love. Shoot for the moon. If you miss, you're still amongst the stars. Peace.